Welcome to the Shower Epiphanies podcast, where we explore your hidden thoughts and desires, revealing your greatest drop the mic moments. Now, here's your host, Art Costello. Welcome to this Shower Epiphanies podcast. Today, I am just thrilled to have Cynthia Clark. I met her at the New Media Summit in San Diego, and she is a palm reading consultant and compatibility expert, author of Stories in Your Hands. Cynthia has worked with over 7,000 people in the last 10 years to unlock the truth of their highest potential and joy. She has recently launched a worldwide dating platform that uses palmistry to help people identify and find their soulmate match. Welcome to the show, Cynthia. Oh, thank you so much, Art. I'm super happy to be here. It's good to see you. Good to see you too. She's a cutie. <laughs> she's a cutie, guys. <laughs> but she's married. I am. <laughs> Can you tell us your story? Yeah, absolutely. So I have kind of a, a two part story. So part one is how I got into palm reading, <laughs> which of course is kind of a strange thing to do. Like, not too many people in the world actually read palms for a living. And I used to own a restaurant. So just so you know, I have a business background. I have a business degree from the University of Utah. And I really didn't study any of this, quote unquote, like woo woo stuff (laughs) (laughs) until much later in my life. Anyway, so I had sold my restaurant back in 2006. And I was pretty much retired at that point. And I just decided well, you know, I should get back to work. I should do something. (laughs) You know, I was only in my early 30s, so I was way too young to be retired. (laughs) (laughs) And so what I like to do is go to the library and I like to pick up books and I love to read. And I like to read all kinds of different things. So on this particular day, I went to the library and I picked up a book on palmistry. And I had never studied it before. I had never looked at my hands before. (laughs) I I didn't know anything about it other than I was a little skeptical, which is probably like most people. I was a little skeptical and I was a little bit like, huh, well, I wonder if there's really anything to this. And so I decided to take the book home. I mean, that's the great thing about being at the library, right? And so I took it home, started reading it, and I had this really profound deja vu experience. It was as if I had read it before. It was as if I had known it my whole life. And I really got a very strong, almost like a voice, even though it wasn't a voice, but it was like in my head. It was like, you need to study this again. And I was just like, Okay, this is weird. (laughs) I call it an epiphany. You had an epiphany. (laughs) Yes, I had this epiphany. And so this was my first, like, real epiphany. And I just had this amazing, like, familiarity with the material. I was reading it. It felt very natural. It felt like, wow, okay, there's something to this. So instead of just taking the book back to the library and going on with my life, I decided to test out some of the material on people around me. So I was married at the time and I asked my husband, okay, can I look at your hands? And he's like, okay, what are you doing? (laughs) (laughs) And I started telling him things about himself that, I mean, even though I knew him very well, he was like, you can see this here, like you're reading this here. And it was so strange. And so then I started doing this with people I really didn't know very well, acquaintances and just people I worked with. And every single response was basically the same. It's like, oh my gosh, how is it that you know this? And I want to know more. And so it was a very positive response. And so I just was like, wow, okay, I think there's something to this palm reading thing. And it's really not as woo-woo as I thought it was. (laughs) And it's actually really useful and people can benefit from it. So that's how I got started into just palm reading itself. And, you know, I've been doing it now for over 10 years and I'm so grateful 
that I've had this experience. And it all started with that, that epiphany. The need to have closure in any given situation is sheer human nature. And when it comes to romantic relationships, this desire skyrockets. Has your previously failed relationship left you in immense pain? It's not uncommon for people to shy away from a new relationship after their first one fails miserably. The fear of the unknown makes them hide in a shell to prevent any future heartbreak. Relatable? Despite wanting to love and be loved, you can't take the plunge if your mind and heart are still locked somewhere in the past. Maybe you aren't aware of the power of releasing the past, or perhaps you don't know how to do it. Art Costello in his online course teaches the art of moving on from bad places to happier, more stable ones. This course can change your life for good, helping you beat all kinds of negativity on the road to eternal bliss. Sign up now before the gloominess gets the better of you at expectationacademy.com. You know, how much of the do you think is intuitive and how much do you think is actually knowledge that you gain from reading the book and learning how to the different lines? Does that make sense, that question? Absolutely. And I would say that it's probably 70-30. So 70% 70 is learning the language of hands. And it's actually like a, you can think of it like a foreign language. There are rules and regulations and you can learn them. Anybody can learn them. But there is a certain aspect of intuition that comes in. And that's actually how I developed my soulmate identifying system. And so that's like, a, you know, part two of the story. <laughs> <laughs> there is a, a certain aspect that comes through the more, especially the more hands that you read, you know, once you get past like, say 500 hands, you're going to read them differently than your, say your first, your first 500 hands are going to be like, okay, I'm memorizing the material that I've learned. And I'm, you know, I'm testing it out on the person and I'm not really thinking about anything else because, you know, it's kind of like that foreign language. It's like, okay, I got to remember the phrase, you know, <laughs> how do I say hello? How do I respond? You know, it's like I studied French in school too. So that was my minor. But yeah, so that's kind of like when you're learning something new, you're just like really focused on, okay, what's the rule? What is this called? What does it have to do with? But then as you get further along, so yeah, I'd say after about 500 pairs of hands, that's when you really start to pick up like, hey, guess what? You can kind of piece things together and you can start to see something in a more complete picture, more of a complete whole. And that's really how my, just my evolution of reading has developed over time. And I, I do have tons and tons of training. So I've read over a hundred books on palmistry. I've trained with some of the best teachers in the world. I've put in thousands of hours of actual like learning systems, learning, you know, mm -hmm. different things like that. But at the same time, I've developed my own way of kind of interpreting and looking at things. And that's come through the intuition, which couldn't have come. I don't think it could have come without all of that experience first. Like I needed to get that experience. I just, I just had a morbid thought. <laughs> this is really kind of morbid. You know, it's always easy to tell people the good stuff. But when you're reading a palm and you see something bad or something, I don't want to use the word bad. I don't like that word. Yeah. You see something that is adverse to their, to their growth, to their psyche, you know, their whole being. How do you handle that? I actually have a really good story about that. Tell us. Which unfortunately didn't end well for the person. But I think this is a really good story. Well, I have, I have two good stories, actually. One ended well, one didn't end well. So the one that did end well, okay, I was reading for a guy in his 50s. And he had actually gone to Tibet. And he was greeted by some mountain palm reader I can't like mystic like somebody mm -hmm. <laughs> somebody like that <laughs> the woo woo kind <laughs> yeah <laughs> anyway that person told him that when he was in his 50s I think 53 or something that he would die 
that he would either die at that point, or he would get through like a very serious illness and he would come out the other side and then he would live a very long life. And so when I met him, he was at that age of whatever it was that they had told him he would die. Mm -hmm. And so he was kind of petrified to talk to me, (laughs) obviously, because it's like, am I going to die this year? (laughs) And I um, looked at his hand and I could see the point on his lifeline. So by the way, your lifeline does not tell you how long you're going to live. Okay. So that's a myth. And that's because your lines actually change. Okay. So even major lines like a lifeline can change. So a lot of people think that's what it tells you, but it's not, but it does tell you about like challenges and stability and vitality. You mean I can stop eating? Because I thought if my hands got fat, it changed my life. Sorry, I had to be funny. Sorry. (laughs) Yes, your hands will change. (laughs) Your fingers can get fatter or skinnier. Your your fingers can bend. I mean, all kinds of stuff can happen. Anyway, so this guy... I could see the stress in his lifeline. There was a break in his lifeline, which is still a big deal. Even if you, you know, don't read it as a death, it's, you know, which I don't read it that way, but it's still something to pay attention to. So it was definitely for him. I'm like, okay, well, look at how it's breaking. And I said, okay, well, it looks like you're you're coming through it and it looks really positive. And it looks like whatever the experience is, is going to be a growth period for you. And sure enough, he had had a major illness, almost died, got through it, and he was fine. And so he was wondering if that was, quote unquote, the event. And so the answer was like, well, yes, that was the event. And so he was really relieved. And, you know, then he was more excited about like, well, what else is here, you know? Like, like how wealthy am I going to be? <laughs> yeah, well, he was already a multimillionaire, so that wasn't a problem. But, um, <laughs> but I think he was just looking more in terms of like his stage two of life. You know, it's like, well, if I'm going to be around, what can I do with the rest of my life that's meaningful? And I think a lot of people really are just looking for meaning in their lives, And unfortunately, I did see a young woman and I had read for her for several years and she had a break in her lifeline that was more like a fade where the line, instead of being like a solid line, like literally disappeared and then it faded back in. And so how I interpreted that for her at the time was like, you really need to ground yourself and you need to pay attention because she was kind of a daredevil kind of a person. She took really big risks. She was an expert skier and she was a mountain climber and she was a risk taker. And in my opinion, she kind of pushed it to the edge. And I told her not to do that. I'm like, don't push it too hard, you know, just be careful. And unfortunately, she fell to her death at age 25. Oh, wow. So then I was really interested in her hands afterwards. And I had tracked her for probably three years and I saw that fade out on the lifeline. And it was just like, boy, it was sad. It was really sad. Yeah. 25 is really, really young. They haven't started to live, but I mean, it happens, you know, we, we live and die, you know I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, it's amazing that you can see that in the hand. It just amazes me. You know, because I I think back to the guys that I was in Vietnam with, you know, Mm -hmm. that were 17, 18 years old, you know, and lose their lives and stuff, you know, and if it was already in their hands that you could see that, you know. Yeah. But yeah, I do feel like people can change their fate based upon their decisions. You know, so let's say you have, you know, a challenge like that, you know, it's like, well, maybe if she would have you know, maybe not taken so many risks, or if she just would have been a little more careful in the mountains that she decided to climb, you know, I mean, she was climbing a very dangerous 14er. Mm -hmm. And it's like, why do you need to push it that far? You know, it's like you, you fall, you die kind of scenario. I mean, I'm an expert skier myself, and I don't take those kind of risks. I know my limits. And I know, 
Like I want to stick around. (laughs) You know, the other thought that I'm having with this is that I've known so many young people because we have so many bull riders here that ride bulls and, you know, it's a dangerous, dangerous sport. Yeah. Getting on the back of a 2000, 2,500 pound bull is a dangerous sport. For sure. And I've lost several friends over the years and all that young men that have pursued it. But the one thing that they all had in common, the bull riders would, was if I'm going to die, I would rather die doing something that I love than, yeah. you know, going, going in a car accident or whatever, you know? Right. So, you know, I guess that's a different perspective of it, but it doesn't really involve what you, what you do. It's just a thought I had in my head. So, yeah, no, for sure. I mean, I, I like to give people advice. So yeah, I, I would never ever tell somebody when they're going to die. I mean, I can't read that anyway through the hands, but I would never even want to guess at something like that. It's just really, to me, it's very irresponsible. Mm -hmm. But I do like to look at challenges. So I'm glad you brought that up because challenges really are just opportunities to help people to grow. And if you can recognize what they are and they're very clearly spelled out in the hands, then it can help you to just live with more joy, more success, more love. I mean, that's what it's all about. And so you don't look at those those challenges as like they're just beating you up. They're not really like that. They're just showing you, okay, this is a block or this is something you struggle with, but you can take that and you can make progress in it and you can open it. And then you're going to see a different result. And that's helpful. I mean, that's really, really helpful when you know that a challenge is coming and you can prepare for it because I write a lot in my book about how do you expect the unexpected Mm. <laughs> and exactly. you, know, you know how do you do that and it's about being prepared you know you're prepared for the unexpected I mean we all know that stuff is going to happen in our lives but if you have your palm read and it doesn't have to be specific dates but if you know you're going to have these certain challenges like can you tell when there's going to be money challenges when there's going to be money abundance and that kind of thing I can definitely tell if you're blocked in money Or if you feel like that's very important to you, like those types of things will show up. Mm -hmm. And what I like to help people with is the opening of of blockages. So I've done energy healing work for about 20 years, and I've got some really cool techniques to help people kind of work through different challenges. And I especially love helping people through their heart blockages So like, there's 10 different heart chambers that show up in your hands. And if you can figure out which one is blocked, you know, it's going to explain either the struggle that you're having in a current relationship, or it's going to explain why you're either attracting a bad relationship or simply are not in a relationship. So to identify those things is just so valuable. Do you read your own palm? All the time. (laughs) All the time. (laughs) Yeah. In fact, I have tracked my hands now ever since I started reading palms. So a little over 10 years. Hmm. And it's funny because I've tracked a few other people as well. And you can see the changes. You can actually look at, you know, oh, yeah, that year I was really struggling over in these areas. And hey, it looks like it's starting to get better and better and better. And it's like, yay. And sure enough, right, right now where I'm at in my life, I'm very happy. I'm happily remarried after a divorce and a fatal attraction uh, relationship. So I've, I've really come through some pretty heavy experiences. And I think the reason why I went through those experiences was so that I would have the perspective to help other people get through them. I believe that. I honestly do that the reason that we're faced with challenges and obstacles and uh, even joys. I mean, you know, a lot of people focus on the obstacles and the blockages, but there's a lot of people who have great success and are still unhappy or still not fulfilled in many ways. 
So you've got to learn how to handle the good with the bad and the bad with the good. And, and it's just part of life. Exactly. And that's the other cool thing about hands is that there's really three different aspects to palmistry. And this is, again, something that I don't think everybody really thinks about every day. But you've got your fingerprints, right? Okay. Now, you know, you can't change those, right? No, I had mine filed off. <laughs> <laughs> well, they'll throw back, I promise. <laughs> so, yeah, so your fingerprints form five months before you're born, and they never, ever change. They represent your soul imprint. So when you, you know, they form five months before birth. So before you even have a personality, you have fingerprints. And those fingerprints are unique to you, which is, of course, why the FBI can identify you with a fingerprint. And you can try to file them off or burn them or whatever, but I promise you they'll grow back. (laughs) You you simply can't get rid of them. In fact, I read for a guy who, like, put both of his hands in a bonfire and he burned off, like, all of his fingertips. And he showed me the picture of this, like, a couple of months after he got better and I could, we blew up the picture and I could totally read the fingerprints. It was so like creepy, but really <laughs> cool. <laughs> so anyway, that was an experience. <laughs> yeah. But what I'm getting at is that you, you came in with an agenda, like your soul did, and that's going to be in your fingerprints. So you also have an archetype. Okay. And that forms in your hands as your palm shape. So from the time you're born to the time you're about six years old, you are completely in your subconscious mind and you are developing your personality. You don't have a set personality yet because you're still forming. You're still very young. But by the time your hand forms its final shape, and that's around age five or six, that's going to represent your subconscious influences that affect your personality. And that also will tell you who you're most compatible with, who you're not compatible with. Also, it represents like what your personality wants to demonstrate and what you naturally, you know, just some of your natural traits. You can think of it like that. And then there's all the lines in your hand, which we already talked a little bit about, which change that represents your free will. So you can Like if you change the way you think or you change your emotions or you change your environment, chances are something in your hand will change with it and it will reflect that. So how you interact with your environment, how you interact with people, how you feel, how you think, all that is going to be in the changeable aspect of your lines. Hmm. And all of these things kind of overlay almost like a, you know, like a sandwich, maybe you could think of it like that, where <laughs> we got like the bread and the cheese and whatever, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and all of it creates you. And it's putting those things together that can really help you understand the different aspects of who you are. And I feel that the more you know about that, the better decisions you can make in your life and the more fulfilled, you know, the happier you'll be. So yeah, let's say you're struggling with, you know, your job, but you're happy in your relationship. You know, that's, that's terrific. Maybe you need to find out what is going on in your talents. Like what talents do you naturally have that maybe you're not expressing, And so those kinds of things will show up. Like you may have a talent marker in your passive hand. And this is, again, why we have two hands. Potential shows up on one hand. Like already developed stuff shows up on the other hand. You can also think of like ancestral influences are going to be more in the passive hand. The active hand is going to be more current type stuff. And both hands do change. But you may have a talent on your passive hand and it's like, hey, guess what? You have a talent that maybe you could develop or use. And if you choose to use it, you'll probably be a lot happier. And if you've got it on your active hand or if you've got it on both hands, it's like, okay, you definitely need to be using this this talent or gift. And if you're not, chances are you're in the penalty zone or the negative side of it and you're struggling. So once you fully understand that and embrace that, it can change your whole life. Just knowing one talent marker can change your whole life. 
Sure. I mean, it, it makes sense. I mean, that it could. Yeah. If you're open to it, if you're open minded enough. Because there's people that always buck everything, you know, I mean, they, they don't want to, you know what I mean? Yes. They want to challenge it, you know, and say, oh, that, you know. Yes. Has anyone ever inspired you to discover a happier, healthier, and more fulfilled you? It is a magical experience, isn't it? Inspiration is indeed very powerful, yet it's often undermined. It can lift you from the ground to the sky in no time. Have you ever thought about returning the favor by inspiring the people around you? If you don't think you have it in you, we have good news for you. Art Costello's online course has everything you need to learn to supercharge yourself and shape your character into a powerful personality. Get ready to discover your strengths and unleash the creativity within. Don't believe it? Check it out yourself by signing up for this life-changing course at expectationacademy.com. That's expectationacademy.com. I always have this saying that I use, I believe in the possibilities of everything, you know, yeah. because I'm open to everything. I mean, I, I believe that when your mind is open to things and you'll look at them, then you gain knowledge. And when you gain knowledge, then you can make the decisions that you want to make with certainty. And this is another realm that I hadn't thought about where implementing it in your life really could have a pronounced effect on the outcomes that we have in our lives. So using it is a really, really good tool and being able to be open to it is even better. Yeah. And a lot of people, I think the problem goes back to the 1500s when palmistry was deemed witchcraft and you would be burned at the stake for practicing it. I mean, I was probably killed in many lifetimes. If, you know, I, I feel like I've probably been killed, <laughs> you know, more than once for doing stuff like this. <laughs> But it kind of makes sense why we still have sort of this negative stigma around palmistry. And unfortunately, I feel like it is so outdated, but we really need to come back to the truth of it. And it goes back way more than people realize. I mean, it's at least 4,000 years old. We think it started either in China or India. We're not really sure but it's very, very ancient. And modern palmistry is actually quite scientific, especially once you start to think about like, yeah, it's a language. And it's not really predictive in, like I said, I don't tell you when you're going to die, but I can certainly see challenges and things like that. And I think if we can take away some of the fear around it, then maybe more people would be open to really learning like what it's all about because it is so useful. I mean, it's just changed my life in so many positive ways. Fear stops everything. When they go into that fear mode, it, you know, it stops you from learning. It stop, I mean, there's so many aspects of fear. We could talk all day about that. One of the things that I want to talk about <laughs> is relationships and Palmistry. Yay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, my favorite subject. <laughs> yeah, this is where it gets really juicy. <laughs> and I did not come across this by accident. I swear, this is like all divinely led. And I feel just very grateful to all my relationships. Okay. And this is something where a lot of people are going to be like, wow, you're even grateful for your fatal attraction. <laughs> like, you know what? I am because it has taught me so much. So I was married for 19 years. I was married to a really wonderful guy and I wish him absolute joy and happiness forever. I don't talk to him anymore. I don't know where he is anymore, but I really do hope that he is okay. And for a lot of reasons, our marriage ended, which I won't get into all those details, but it was just time for it to end. And that was another thing that, you know, how the universe sends you messages and things like that. Oh my heck, did I get a lot of messages at that time? I got the triple nine 
which I don't know if you do numbers or numerology or that sort of thing, but I read numbers too, just in for my own, you know, personal messages from the universe. <laughs> and so triple nine basically was like, okay, something big is ending. <laughs> and I was like, huh, I wonder what's ending. <laughs> I still had no idea. And then I had a line in my hand. It's they're called affection lines. And I had an affection line that was detaching. And I was like, huh, well, maybe I'm not reading this line correctly. Like I was starting to doubt my own abilities. <laughs> it's really funny. But anyway, so the universe was kept trying to throw me messages and I finally figured it out. Anyway, so I went through a dark period of, you know, divorce and I ended up getting vertigo for like nine months and I, man, I was sick. I couldn't drive a car. I like, I could barely walk. I mean, it was really horrible. I had vertigo for three days and I went berserk. I mean, it just, I did not, I couldn't walk. I couldn't. Yeah. Yeah. I had it for nine months. It, It was really horrible. And I had attracted what I call the fatal attraction (laughs) at that time (laughs) when I was really vulnerable and going through my divorce. It was so interesting how this all played out. I was with him on and off for about two years. And then eventually I got out of that relationship. And boy, do I have a lot of stories with that one. But I ended up with my current husband. We've been married a little over two years now and we're so happy and I'm just like I couldn't be like just more happy about the way everything turned out (laughs) you know life is really really amazing but during all that time I ended up learning about relationships in such a way that you can actually read them in the hands but not just to understand like I had always studied like the personality archetypes and you know, that like I was telling you about that second type of mm-hmm. reading, the hand shapes, right? That form mm-hmm. by the time you're about six. Those hand shapes not only tell you who you are, but they tell you who you are like literally best aligned with. So in other words, your soulmate archetype. And of course we have many, many soulmates too. So I don't want people to get hung up on that term soulmate. We have thousands of people could be your soulmate match. But it's a type of connection that goes beyond the superficial. So a lot of times people are attracted by, oh, what does he look like? Or, you know, do we have the same things in common? You know, things like that are, in my opinion, kind of just superficial. And after a certain amount of time, unless you're really matched you know, energetically, you're probably not going to be in a good relationship with that person, or you're going to have some sort of problems like I did with my fatal attraction, (laughs) you know, just not healthy, toxic, you know, can be kind of destructive. So if you want to get into a really good relationship, especially if you're not in one already, why not do it in such a way that is actually in alignment with who you are, which is in your hands, And it flows so much easier. Like I consider a soulmate relationship, one of those relationships that just is, it's not perfect. Okay. So a lot of times we have this idea of perfection. Nothing is perfect because we're all designed to grow and evolve, but it's easy. And then there's a certain amount of flow in it and it's comfortable and it helps you expand So it helps you become more aligned with your purpose. And you also can help that person become more aligned with their purpose. And it's just a very expansive relationship. That is what I want for everybody. Does your matchmaker system that you've developed address all that? Yes, it does. So can you tell us about the matchmaker system? Yes, I would love to tell you. So I'm one of those, again, remember, I have a business degree and I like, if we go back to my, you know, like my restaurant days, I'm a worker, first of all. And second of all, I try to like, I can only do so much if I'm working with people one-on-one, right? So in my mind, I was like, how can I automate this where people can actually get matched without me having to read every single person's hand, you know? I can only do so much in a day, right? (laughs) (laughs) So I ended up 
finding a programmer, a computer programmer, because I am definitely not one of those. I don't have that type of brain. And I just proposed like, okay, this is what I need the system to do. Can you program it so that we can automate the system? And he's like, yeah, we can do that. You know, it'll take some work, but we can do that. And so that's how loveinyourhands.com came into being. And so it's really amazing. The algorithm uses everything I've learned about palmistry. It helps actually put you into the category you belong in. And it will automatically match you in the system with anybody who's in alignment with you. So it's really revolutionary in the way that it matches people. And I'm really excited to just get it out there. And it's worldwide. I set it up to be worldwide because everybody has hands unless you've had an accident or something. Don't know which direction you want your life to take? Are you sinking deep down into the pit of uncertainties day by day? So what's the secret to leading a happy, satisfied life? It's taking matters into your own hands. But what if the matters in question are a total blur? Art Costello's Expectation Academy course aims to tell you exactly how you can get some clarity in your life. This course can be your savior on your journey to reinventing yourself. While you certainly can't plan your whole future ahead, you can definitely control twists and turns your life takes. So what are you waiting for? Sign up for this course now at expectationacademy.com. Get a chance to broaden your horizons and add meaning to your life. That's expectationacademy.com. I'm trying to picture this. How do they get their palm print to where you can get read it to match? And Yeah. So thankfully, we have so much technology out there now. <laughs> All you really have to do is take a digital picture of your palm and you upload it into the computer And it will ask you just a couple of questions, up to five questions is all you need to answer. So you know how some of those profiles, Mm -hmm. you have to answer like hundreds of questions. (laughs) It's not like that at all. (laughs) Only up to five questions. And then it will be able to put you into the soulmate archetype that you are, who's your match, who's your fatal attraction, who's your opposite, who are other great matches, which I do recommend looking at great matches as well, because they could be, you know, just as good as a soulmate match. So definitely they're worth exploring more, get to know those people more. And it's pretty cool. Yeah. It's- so you have to build your database of single people, or I, I was going to say, I guess you could get some jerks on there that are going to be married and looking for their soulmate, but I'm sorry. Yeah, well, hopefully not. <laughs> uh, yeah, hopefully not. So you have to build a database of, of men and women and, you know, that you'll build the platform with, right? Is yeah, that, I mean, it's ready to go. It's out there. Is there a cost to it? I'm actually offering one month membership for free. So anybody can go out there and try it totally free today and find out your archetype. And and this is the other cool thing. Okay. So let's say you're on a bunch of other dating sites because back when I got divorced and I actually tried some online dating and I found it kind of frustrating. (laughs) You know, the whole thing was like, oh yeah, yeah. (laughs) It's how I met my wife. Yeah. Yeah. See, but it does work, right? Yes, it does. (laughs) But it does take some work, right? So let's say you're on two or three sites. And yeah, my database is probably not nearly as big as say some of the other ones because I'm just getting started. But it can still be very useful for you because if you find somebody either in person or on one of the other dating sites, just ask for a picture of their hand. Okay. Now, if they're not open to this, then maybe they're not the right person for you anyway. But just get a picture of their hand. You can upload that into my membership as many times as you want. So you can have, you know, if you have 10 people you want to check out, you can find out if you're compatible with them or not. Is it too late for me to put my wife's and my hands in there to see if we're compatible? (laughs) Well, no. (laughs) No, I feel like it's never too late to understand your partner better. 
but I wouldn't necessarily recommend you go into the site for that. Like I really do recommend <laughs> single, single people should just go in there. But if you're a couple, then, you know, I certainly do work with couples and I can just help them to understand each other better. So for example, I'm not going to be like a home wrecker. Like that's not, <laughs> that's not what I'm about, but I just want to give you the awareness of like art. This is your archetype. This is who you are. And this is your spouse. And this is what they're all about. And it just helps you to understand that person better. Yeah, I'm really blessed. I'm, I'm married. Very, very wonderful lady and absolutely have more fun than I've ever had in my life. I mean, really, in the past 10 years, you know, because I was married 38 before I lost my wife to cancer. And the last 10 years have probably been the most joyous. But let me just tell you what my late wife left me with. One of the greatest gifts I think a woman can leave a husband. And at the time, I didn't think about it. When she was passing away, she told me, she said, I want to release you from your marriage vows so you can go find someone to treat just like you've treated me for all these years because she's waiting for you out there. Oh, I love that. And, you know, I think Vicki's hands were all over me meeting Beverly because she has certainly been, been the biggest blessing in my life. So if you're listening out there and you're looking for a spouse, there is hope. And, you know, this is really, really something that can add to your arsenal of tools to picking a, a mate. Yeah. I really love it. It's good. And I know your story. I know how happy you are. Yeah, I'm so happy. And I read my husband's hands on our first date because <laughs> I really you, wanted to know. Can you tell us what that was like? <laughs> well, he was a good sport. So thankfully, I mean, he already knew what I did for a living. So it wasn't like a big mystery. So I'm sure he was expecting me to ask him, <laughs> it's like, can I see your hands, please? He was really open to it, though, because he's what I call the investigator archetype. And investigators are super curious, and they want to know everything about everything anyway. So he was already open to like, yeah, what do you see? I want to know. To me, that was such a compliment because it's like, well, yay, I don't have to like pry your fingers open. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like a test of trust, you know? I mean, if somebody will show your hand like that, I mean, just thinking about this logically, I mean, you know, you put your hand out yes. is a gesture of goodwill and kindness. So putting his hand out to you willingly is a sign of trust in you. Yes. That is really cool. That is cool. Yeah. And it doesn't mean you can't make a less than ideal like match work. I mean, you, you definitely can. I mean, I was married to my first husband of 19 years. We were not a soulmate match. We were in what I would call a good match, you know, and, and I would say in a lot of ways things worked, but in a lot of ways they were challenging. And, you know, it's like, now I just have such a different perspective on the entire relationship because of my knowledge of hands. I understand that perfectly because, I mean, I was married for 38 years to a woman. We had our challenges and we certainly had our disagreements. She was very strong-willed and I'm very strong-willed and we butted heads on a lot of things. But the one thing that always kept us is that we knew we loved each other. And, you know, that was the bond that kept us, you know, we trusted and, and loved each other. Mm -hmm. But Beverly, my current wife always says, you were trained well for 38 years before I got you. She had never been married. Oh, wow. She was 53 and had never been married when she wow. met me. And I was 10 years older than her. And, you know, yeah, her girlfriends just asked her what she saw in me, you know, so. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's the cool thing about understanding your archetype is that it actually gives you a way of communicating with other people and a way of understanding them better. So it can build the relationship, I feel, in ways that other types of profiling really can't do mm -hmm. because it's that subconscious influence. Yeah. It's really amazing. Yeah. And one of the things I was just thinking about when you were saying that was, is that in the work that I do with people, I often see so many, and I see more women than I do men, but I see so many women that are unhappy in their relationships and have been in long-term relationships, you know, 25, 15, 25, 35 years. 
and they're trying to figure out how to end the relationship and transition into a new life. You know, these tools are not only give them hope, but if they had known about it before, they might have been able to even maybe in some cases salvage marriages because they would have known the unknown. Mm-hmm. And anytime you know the unknown, <laughs> yes. it's powerful. I mean, it's really mm-hmm. powerful. So. Yeah, it builds compassion and it builds understanding on different levels. And to me, it's just like, why wouldn't you want to know that? So, you know, that's why I really want to get the fear out of the whole thing, because it's like knowing this is very powerful information. Yeah, it is. With that being said, how can people and where can people get a hold of you? They can go to my website. So go to loveinyourhands.com. And you can reach me through the site. You can email me, Cynthia at loveinyourhands.com. And I've got all sorts of services. I help people through heartbreaks. I help people understand the whole compatibility system. I've got some different online courses. And I also help people to actually magnetize to their soulmate. I've really studied this. And all the tools that I share are ways that I attracted my current husband. So it's not, it's definitely been tested. (laughs) And then, um, yeah, they can get started for free in the membership area and find out their archetype. And it's, you know, just knowing that is very useful. Is there any parting wisdom you want to bestow on us? Yes, I totally agree with you that it's never too late. So, you know, it doesn't matter if you're in your 60s, 70s, 80s, (laughs) like it does not matter how old you are. It's really up to you just to have the desire to be in that type of relationship. You can have that relationship and it really is a choice. And yeah, it takes a little bit of work, but you can have that. And if I can help you get there, I'm more than happy to do that because I mean, I want to see. I want to see a lot of, a lot more love in the world. And, you know, if we can all learn to live life with love, that's what I'm all about. So that is the truth. Yeah. Never give up on love, please. No, <laughs> you can't, you can't. If you give up on love, you've given up and yeah. that's, that's not good. Well, Cynthia Clark, it has been a pleasure. I can't believe that we just went through about 50 minutes of just, faster than anything. So much knowledge that you've laid on us and so many insights. It's really great. And I'm going to encourage everybody to go to Cynthia's site and support her and, and, you know, she'll help you find what you're possibly looking for. And it'll just all work out the way it's supposed to be when you trust your hands. (laughs) Absolutely. Thank you so much. It's been really fun. Thank you, Cynthia. Everybody out there and Shower Epiphanies Land, thank you for attending this week. And you know where you can get a hold of me, expectationtherapy.com. It's been a pleasure. Another week. Thank you again, Cynthia. And I hope that every dream that you have comes true. Oh, thank you. With that being said, everybody, have a great week. Thanks for listening to the show. Drop us your comments and questions with what you want answered on the show. You can subscribe on iTunes and Binge Network. You can also get more information on the website, expectationtherapy.com.